when that voice becomes quiet and the light of God becomes dim, becomes hidden under bushels, as it was described in the scripture, amen, then we be, the world itself becomes more and more dark, moving further and further away from God. Do I have any witnesses here today? Amen. We can see all around us the concepts of God, the concepts of godliness Amen. are taking off, becoming off the table more and more and more. Things that we used to consider, yeah. things that, 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 that we would never do, even our social circles, things that we would never boast about or speak about. The unspeakable now has become the common speak, spoke, spoken thing. Amen. The things, amen, that are ungodly. Amen. We have pu pushed godliness out of the way, out, amen, of our schools, out of our government. Amen. Some cases out of our churches. Amen. We have become more and more of a secular mind. What is right for me? What is right in my will and my purpose? What benefits me? I want to show you in a moment that all represents a mindset that is ungodly. That's why we said at the beginning of this, when we talk about prayer and, and being children of God, we are not selfless. We are not just about us because the love of God spreads outward. It's not just for the inside. If, if you're not feeling for somebody around you, something's not right because the love of God is always concerned above and beyond itself. We saw that with Jesus who was careless in terms of his own condition but worried about those around him. Even on the cross, he's looking down at his mother and looking down at his disciples. On the cross, he's caring about uh, the other man that's on the cross next to him you'll be with me in paradise even as he's dying he's looking outward to those in need and those who are looking for a light that's right. That's right. because on that cross he had one man that was consumed with darkness are you hearing me today and one man that was looking for a light and the reason he held up on dying and spoke to him and invited him into paradise with them was because he was looking for a light and here he was Jesus dying on the cross saying come on son you're going to be with me in paradise today amen. light amen in the midst of darkness but darkness is being pushed out of the way the mindset is shifting further and further amen into what I want instead of what a God would want instead of what God created me to be and instead of what a higher power thinks what higher power amen now they tell you their religions that tell you that you are the higher power you are God or you are gods in and of yourself that whole mentality goes stretches all the way back to even before the earth was fully and completely established it's called in the Bible the spirit of Babylon. The spirit of Babylon is defined and described throughout the Bible. Amen. It's a spirit, it's a spiritual mindset that desires to overcome or to resist the will or purposes of God. It is a mindset that wants to do self over God or make self greater than God. And it has existed in its resistance against God. Amen. Even before we got on the scene. But we look in the Bible for this specific reference in the book of Genesis, amen, chapter 11, where it describes to us here the, for the first time this concept of Babylon, amen. We know the story. Many of you who have been around, been in Sunday school, know the story of the Tower of Babel, amen. It was a mindset here that we see, amen, after Noah's Ark, after, amen, corruption had supposedly been taken out of the world, after everything that had happened and transpired before that caused God to want to destroy the world, a few generations later, amen, as men began again to grow and develop and establish in the world, the Bible says they're all unified together. They're speaking one language, and in the midst of them, this mindset shows up again that says we got to do for us in genesis chapter 11 let me read verse in verse 3 it says and they said one to another go to let us make a brick and burn them thoroughly and they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar in verse 4 it says and they go and i'm reading in the king james now it says and they said go let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven and let us make a name. In some versions it adds to that, let us make a name for ourselves. 
amen, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. There's a mindset here. It's not just the act that's taking place. They're building a tower. I was watching a movie not long ago. Amen. It was called Gods of Egypt. And in this, they were building this great tower. Amen. It was as high as could possibly be imagined. He was saying, they were describing it. This is the highest tower that has ever been built by man. We want to show just how capable we are in building the greatest, tallest tower that has ever been made. There's a mindset that says, let Let's take our ability, our knowledge, our capabilities, our wisdom, and let's show what we're able to do. Not only are we going to do it on earth, but we're going to lift it all the way up into the heavens. We want heaven to see how great we are. Are you hearing the mindset? We want to pull together all of our capabilities, all of our strength, all of our knowledge, all of our technology, all of our science, and just demonstrate just how powerful, how unique we are. Can you see the same thing happening even today? As a virus comes and takes over the whole world, no consideration of God. No Lord have mercy on us. No Lord bless us in this time. It's about we've got the science to figure out how to handle this thing. And every scientific thing they do that fixes one problem starts another one. Every time they think they've got it under control, it continues to escalate away from them. Why? Because they can only do so much. You can only challenge God so much before you get a response out of God. There's a mindset that says, amen, let's do this for us. Let's show us, show how good we are. In fact, let's show the heavens themselves. Let the heavens see. Understand and remember that God gave man dominion over the earthly realm. But it's not good enough to be good on the earth. Let's show the heavens just how good we are here on earth. Let's show the heavens how much power and capability we have. We don't need you to come down to us. We're coming up to you. There's a mindset that says, I can do better than God. I can do it better on my own. I can do better by myself than having to depend on God. It's a mindset. It's the spirit of Babylon. It goes all the way, amen, from the beginning, and it carries all the way through the Bible. It started, in fact, amen, with the devil himself. The devil was the first we see to have that mindset. In the book of Isaiah, amen, chapter 14, it tells us the story, amen, of the devil who wanted to make himself greater than God. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, In other words, you used to be the morning star. You used to be heavy connected under the will and purposes of God, but now you have fallen. Why? How art thou cut down to the ground when thou didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into mm -hmm, heaven. And I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, above the stars of God. And I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. And I will send above the heights of the clouds and I will be like the most high. There's a mindset there. There's an attitude that says, look, it's not good enough anymore to just be under God. It's not good enough to be one nation under God. It's not good enough anymore, amen, to be a servant or a child of God. I've got to be at least equal with God. The mindset of the devil was I can be even greater. Listen, I've been doing this job long enough. I know what I'm doing now. I don't need God. I've got people supporting me. I want to have followers like God has. I want to have a throne like God has. I want to have be a leader like God is. And I'll take my throne and elevate it even above the throne of God. God. It's a mindset that became released into humanity. 
We see in the book of Genesis, amen, Adam and Eve, amen, children, servants of God, made in his image, given dominion over the earth, amen, given authority under God, content with that authority until the mindset shows up that tells them, no, 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 you don't understand. It's not good enough just being under God. You have the potential to be like God. The whole aspect of eating the fruit, amen, the devil told them, and why doesn't God want you to eat this? This fruit. This is the devil being cunning. This is how people be in your life. Why you tell me? Why is it that God doesn't want you to do that? Come on, let me hear you say it. Well, God told us not to eat it, not to even touch it. Amen. It's forbidden to us. Well, did he tell you why you should need it? No, he just told us not to eat it. Well, let me tell you. Let me explain to you what God is trying to do. God is trying to keep you down. Because he told them, he said, God knows that if you eat of that fruit, you will become like him uh, with the understanding of wisdom and good of good and evil. You'll be like God. The temptation of those of us who have the ability to choose, amen, is to determine whether we're going to choose our way or or God's way. God made us in his likeness. He gave us the ability to be ingenuitive, to, to think, to be creative, to decide for ourselves, and then gave us the choice. Who are you going to follow? Are you following God? Or are you going to follow self? Yeah. The devil just gave them the opportunity. He didn't do anything to them. He didn't make them do anything. He just gave them an offer. said, look, you know, if you eat of that fruit, you're going to be like God. And the spirit of Babylon that was in the devil, amen, he cast it onto the earth and caused us to decide, you know what? It's not good enough just being under God. I want to be equal with God. So the sin of the devil cast on to the sin of man. Now we see the sin of Babel as they make themselves known in the heavens. We want heaven to know our name. We want to never be forgotten. We want him to know, amen, who we are and how powerful we are on this earth. The spirit of Babylon continues all the way through, the mindset all the way through, even until the book of Revelations, where Babylon, the city, is finally destroyed. I want you to understand it's not just the city, but it's the spirit. It's the mindset of rebellion. It's the mindset of we can do better than God. It's the mindset of we can do best on our own. It's the mindset of we are powerful all by ourselves that has to be destroyed because it constantly keeps mankind in a way of moving further and further away from God. Now, let me ask you right now, can you not see that mindset in and among us right now today? The Bible shows us even in Revelations as, as the tribulation period becomes to, begins to come in, the more God throws on the earth, the more rebellious and angry they'll become. Because their determination is we're going to do it by ourselves. We don't need God. In fact, amen, we curse God. We don't have a mindset for God. The mindset of the spirit of Babylon is an attitude of independence or equality with God. We're created to be independent thinkers, but we are choosing to go our own way instead of going God's way. Migrating further and further away. Every time a calamity comes, it used to be we used to pray. It used to be that our leaders used to call for us to pray. Amen. People we need to pray. I believe back in, in the 1940s when Pearl Harbor was attacked, amen, leaders were calling people to pray. Amen. When 9-11 happened, amen, there was barely a call to prayer. There was more exclamation of we're going to rebuild. We're going to do better. We can overcome. Amen. Now that coronavirus has come upon us, it's not about praying to God. It's about trusting our science. They're more confused against each other than they are for each other. They can't even work together to use the gifts that God has given them. Because they're so struggling for who's in control of this, who has, who is right, who's going to do the right thing, who is the one we should be following. There is a gap in leadership and everybody's trying to figure out who they should follow today. The spirit of Babylon in the midst of everything that's going on. We see us move further and further away from God and deeper and deeper into a self-deity. Thinking that we are God. Thinking that our 
minds, our thoughts, our will is the wisest thing that anyone could have. Consuming ourselves. You know, it used to be we say, well, what does God want? Now we say, well, what do I want? Amen. There's been a transition over the years. And then people used to say, we, we, we live by the Bible. We serve God. We do what the Lord says. And then people started saying, I know that the Bible says this, but I think, but I really feel, I know we're not supposed to do it this way, but here's what I feel. And to me, it feels right. I know we're not supposed to sleep together if we're not saved, but if we're not married, but you know what? I, this feels right. I think this is my person. I think this is okay. Amen. We see other people doing things wrong and talk about them, but then we do it and we got a reason why it's okay for us to do it. I know they no liar, 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 liar. But then you come along and well, you know, mm. we justify in ourselves what we think is right. The Bible says there is a way, amen, that a man thinks is right. Amen. But it ends up, amen, in confusion and destruction. There's a way that seems right to a man. It seems like it's right for me. But when you're going into that mindset, the mindset of Babylon, it confirms in you that with the way I do it is okay. I know it's not the way the word said. It's not quite exactly there. Amen. Yeah, God said that. Mm -hmm. That's why so many of us have trouble with that chapter. Amen. In the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus is preaching and he's telling them, amen. Amen. I told you, amen. The, the, the word said, you, the, you've heard this, but I say this. Amen. He said that, you know, eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say, mm -hmm. give them your coat. Mm -hmm. Bless them that despise you and hurt you. Yes. Mind is blown. Mm -hmm. Because it's hard for us to think outside of what is on our own personal interests. Yeah. The mindset of Babylon causes us to say, everything God wants is okay until it gets in my way. That's the mindset of Babylon. We want to be Christians that still follow the mind, that mindset. We want to be obedient to God except for when God's stuff gets in my way. And then I want to do my own thing. Listen, that's no light that's shining. That's us filling in the darkness. It's a mindset. Amen. The further we go from God, the darker our thoughts become. The things that people now are doing and imagining and going after are things we would, that would have been unimaginable to us. Amen. Years ago, the types of corruptions that we see, the, the offenses that are taking place, the way people, they don't just hurt you. They don't just kill you. They maim people. They stab them 60 times. They, they tear them apart. It's a spirit, amen, of hate and destruction like we've not experienced before. The darker our thoughts become. Yes. People are now imagining and doing things and are, are, are plagued by spirits of imagination that we could not even imagine them doing before. The things that people do to children Jesus. seem almost unimaginable. How could you do that not only to a child, but how could you do that to your child? story on this just this morning of a man, amen, a, a, a woman had invited, amen, a young girl in, amen, as a foster child at 16 years old. And the husband, the man she was with, started, amen, a, a, a relationship with the child and convinced the child to kill his wife. Yeah. Unimaginable things that we would have never even comprehended. How could somebody do that? But the further we get away from God, the darker our thoughts become. Because when there's no God, there's no principles. When there's no God, there's no limitations. There's no extremities. And there's no satisfaction. The more we do, the more we want to do. The more we satisfy our lust, the more lust wants from us. It's a never satisfying endeavor. And so we further, we go creep further and further and further away from God and never fully find satisfaction. There's a greater depression rate today than ever before. There's a greater suicide rate today than ever before. People trying to be happy are more miserable than they've ever been before. Generations that are specialized and committing suicide turning further and further away from God and finding less happiness every time they think if I do this it'll make me happy if I satisfy this urge it'll make me happy if I go this direction it'll make me happy if everybody accepts me the way I am it'll make me happy and they still end up more depressed and more suicidal than ever 
before. And then they blame it on what other people won't accept in their life and mindset. In the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 18, it speaks to us again about the mindset, amen, that creeps in, that's coming in, continuously expanding. i got to read just a few verses of this so you really understand it. Verse 18, Romans 1 and 18, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. It says just before this, amen. No, it's, it's going on. Let me see. It's in this part. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. In other words, that which you should know and understand about who God is, God reveals himself. We choose not to accept what God reveals to us. It's not that you don't know of a God. It's that God revealed him and you rejected what God revealed. Verse 20 says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And now we'd rather believe, amen, in the abilities of science than the abilities of God. I'm a scientist. I believe in science. I believe God gives us science. I believe that God works in, under scientific processes. But I don't believe it's the science that saves us. I believe it's the God that makes it all work and come into existence and organize and structure the way that it does. Amen. They see it and, and praise the science. We see it and praise the God. It's a choice that you make in what you will determine to follow after and what you will believe. He says they're without excuse. Verse 21, he says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful. How many children, how many generations came up in church knowing who God was, hearing who God was, and then decided to turn away and found any kind of excuse you can imagine to make the decision, no, nope, no, nope, not believing in God. No, nope, I got hurt. There can't be a God. No, nope, something happened. God, there can't be God. Some hypocrites can't be a God. They made the choice when they knew God. Glorified him not as God, uh -huh. neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Listen, yeah. professing themselves to be wise, they became Ooh. fools. How many of you know they're still becoming fools today? Yeah. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible Man, in other words, they began to evaluate, ascertain, uh, accept things not based on the image of godliness, but on the image of man. Not according to God, but according to me. Mm -hmm. According to what I feel, according to what I think, according to what I want, that is now the logic and rationale of life. And in this we find no satisfaction because you don't find purpose. Mm -hmm. Think about themselves Versus God. Verse 24 says, Wherefore God also gave them up unto uncleanliness through the lusts of their own hearts. You really must realize when you surrender to your mind being first, it automatically triggers into the desires of your flesh. There's nobody that just because becomes scientifically amen minded in terms of themselves without becoming physically driven by their own lusts. That's why you see so many intelligent people doing so many corrupt things. People with intellect, leaders, people in power, people who are scientists, people who are doctors, people who have great professions and success in life, people who are athletes and have achieved the top, doing all kind of crazy things. Because as your mind goes to self, your mind goes to flesh. And so they are turned, amen, to the lusts of their own heart, heart, hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Listen, who change the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. I'm stopping there, but there's a whole lot more. It'll tell you exactly where we are today. You'll see exactly where we are today because the more we get consumed into it's got to be about me and my way and I am the center of the universe. 
corruption and lust and desires of flesh just take you to places you never would have imagined you would go. I've told people many times there are certain doors you don't want to open because once you open them, it's almost impossible to shut them again. You will do things you never imagined you would do. If you allow yourself to slide over and just try this just one time. Just just come on with me to this one party. Just come on and, and take a little sip of this. Take a little swing on this, swig on this. It will take you to places you never would have imagined you would go. And one day I guarantee you, you'll end up looking back and saying, How in the world did I get here? Because you allowed yourself to be drawn by things that were not of God. And you became consumed in the lust of your own flesh. Darkness overruns the world as a result of the lack of light. Let's get back to light, y'all, because we got a role to play in this. Darkness overruns and consumes the world because there's a lack of light. Man, look at all this darkness. It's terrible, all this darkness out here. Why is it so dark? It's because there's no light. Why is darkness overrunning the world? Because the light is not shining. Because light overruns darkness. Darkness does not overrun light. The world has convinced the church to cover its light, to put it under a bushel, to take it off the candlestick. Amen. We've gotten tired and we're uncomfortable with feeling different and being talked about. Amen. Listen, today people are just talking about you. In days past, they were killing Christians and they still let their light shine. Now we don't even want anybody to talk about us. They don't, we don't want us to say, oh, they're just a Christian. They're a church person. They, they, they just, listen, we, have, we are, are ashamed of who we are. We come in the church and shout and glorify God and we go out in the world and we become don't see no God, don't see no Jesus, don't see, amen, no difference. You looking just the same as I am. You might look holy waving your hands on Sunday, but on Monday morning when you show up as work, you were just another one of us. The darkness grows because the light is not shining. The light is the thing that will draw and compel people to change. And let me just tell you, some people are not going to like the light. Jesus came and showed us what it was to have light in the world. And guess what? Some people did not like the light. The word said he came unto his own and his own received him not. Amen. He was the light of the world. But everybody doesn't want there to be light. Amen. But there, I want you to understand there are some people that are looking for light. But all they see is the darkness. There are some young people that want, amen, a path to success. But all they see is the darkness. All they see are those hustling around them. All they see, amen, is those who are getting by. All those that are doing the things that they're doing. All they see, amen, is those that are having sex, amen, as children and young people. All they see are those that are selling their bodies. All they see are those that are smoking and selling and shooting. So if all they see is darkness, how would we expect them to find light? Somebody doesn't want all that. Somebody wants something different, just doesn't know where to find it. There needs to be a light. Somebody say there needs to be a light. One more scripture in John chapter 3, verse 19. Let me read to you quickly in the New Living Translation. It says, all right, Jesus. Amen. Destroy this temple. That's not the right. Oh, I'm sorry. That's chapter 2. Verse 19 of chapter 3 says, and the judgment is based on this. This is Jesus. Remember, the Bible in chapter 3 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believeth, amen, he came to, into the world as his light. But he says just prior to this, amen, that everybody is not accepting that light. He says that I don't come necessarily to be the judge of those, but the judgment comes from this. Look at what he says in 19. He says the judgment is based on this fact, that God's light came into the world. But people loved darkness more than light, for their actions were evil. Now listen to what it says in 20 and 21. He gives us the condition. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it. Amen. Listen, there's some people out there, if you do show your light, they're not going to like it. Sometimes we hold back our light because we don't want them not to like us. 
if they really knew, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm really a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm here to be saved. Amen. I'm walking with the Lord. Amen. All of a sudden, they'd be looking at you funny. And so to avoid people looking at us like that, we just, just kind of cover over that light. No, I don't need to deal with it here. Amen. I'll just, I'll just take it back. I'm, I'm saved. Hallelujah. Thank God I'm going to heaven. Amen. But I just, I'm not, I, I'm not, I don't, y'all need, need, need to see all that. But I'm, I'm, I'm good. But everybody else around me is seeing darkness because your light is hid under a bushel. Yes, yes, amen. He says there's going to be some people that see that light, they're not going to like it. That's okay. That's all right. Why don't they like it? Look at what it says. He says, all those that hate, do evil, hate the light and refuse to go near, for their sins will be exposed. Mm -hmm. Something about light, when light shows up, yeah. it exposes yeah. things that are done in yeah. the dark. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. No ungodly person wants to hang with you. Yeah. Not when you're being, showing the light. Yeah. They don't want to go to lunch with you. Amen. When you are, you're letting your light shine, they don't want to go out. Amen. Let's go out. Amen. Together. No, no. You go. You go home. We going. Amen. We, we'll see you later. No, you don't need to go. You will take. You will destroy their high. You'll mess up their high up. Can't get high right hanging around you. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. When the light is really, when the light ain't shining, they do whatever they want it for. Yeah, man. We good, right? We good, right? They keep asking you. We good, right? You want something? No. Okay. All right. We good. But when the light shines, all right, we'll be back. We'll be back in a little while. We're going to take care of some stuff. Amen? When the light shines, they don't want you exposing. In fact, they get offended. You think you're so good. You ought to just come over here and drink this with us. You need to, what's the matter with you? Amen? I've heard some people say, you know, look, I don't if, if I don't trust somebody unless uh, if, if they never say any swear words. If they don't cuss, I don't trust them. I've heard people say that. Amen. Look, I don't, if you don't cuss, I don't trust you. So what you going to do? Well, I say a couple little words here just so, you know. God forgive me. Just throw out a couple things. Okay. And now you in the club. Come on, boy. Why are they doing that? Because they want you to be as deep in it as they are. And if you're not in with them in the darkness, they want to kick you out the club. We, this is a no light club. Some people are going to see your light and they're not going to like it. Jesus said, if they didn't like me, they're not going to like you. Amen. Not if you're doing it right. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Right. If, you, if, you, if you're compromising, if you got it under the bushel, if you take it off the candlestick, then come on in the darkness with us. But don't bring that light over here because that light suggests that what we're doing is wrong. If you call them on things that are not according to God, amen, they're not going to want nothing to do with you. They go, all of a sudden, you're the enemy. All of a sudden, you're, they're on the attack. Amen? They call it today cancel culture. That's one of the ways they come and get you. Because if you're not in alignment with what they say and what they believe, you are out of the picture. You can't be in the club. You can't be a part of anything that we are associated with. Amen. You are out. Don't you say that we're wrong. Don't you say that what we're doing is not right. Don't you say, amen, that this isn't the truth. The darkness is not going to have it. Verse 21 says, but, but those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. People who want to be right are tired of being in the darkness all the time. They're looking for the light. There are people out there that are hungering for light. The problem is they just don't see any. Everybody they've come in contact with has been a hypocrite. They talk to them one way behind the scenes and then they got in front of everybody else and they act a whole another way. Hmm. You ain't got no, why am I following you? Why should I come to your church? I know how you act outside of church. Why should I, why should I pray with you? When you just got done doing what I was doing around the corner a few minutes ago. Now you want to pray. Lord Jesus, Lord help us, Lord. Because you're in trouble. Somebody's in trouble. Where was Jesus a few minutes ago in your life? The world is looking for light. That's why the church is so under attack. That's why pastors are so under attack. Man, these pastors, man, they always out for something. All they want is your money. That's all it's about. It's a scam. They try and condemn everything that is of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's speaking in tongues stuff, that's craziness. That ain't nothing. Those folks just, just getting crazy up in there. I don't know what's the matter with them. You don't want none of that. 
Amen. Everything that, the de that God does, the devil condemns. Mm -hmm. And everything that God does, the devil tries to copy. That ought to tell you something. He'll condemn it on one side and then try and do exactly what God is doing on the other. Yes, yes. That's called jealousy. Mm -hmm. Can't do what you do? I don't want you to do it either. Yeah. What I really want is to do what you're doing and do it better than you. <laughs> but if I can't beat you at doing it, then I'm going to talk about you for doing it. That's jealousy. There's a spirit of Babylon that dwells and exists in the world today. God said in the word, let your light shine. Once you understand that our difference is offensive to the world. You don't have to do anything to be offensive to the world. I didn't say nothing. I didn't do, look, just because you have a light, they're not going to like it. Somebody's not going to like it. But we need to understand today that light overcomes darkness. Light repels darkness. Where light is, darkness has to move out of the way. You have a power and authority over darkness. Darkness might get loud. Darkness might get mad. Darkness may not like you. But the power that's inside of you is greater than the power, amen, that is in the world. You got to let your light shine. Somebody's looking for the light. The time where we have to stop covering our lights. Don't soften it because somebody can't appreciate your light. Don't change it to try and fit in with somebody else's darkness. You got to let your light shine. Get your candlestick. Put that light up. Let the whole world know. Guess what? There's light over here because somebody's looking for a path to light. Somebody wants to see what light really looks like. I don't care how they talk about you. I don't care what they say about you. I don't care, hey man, how they might persecute you. Let your light shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Anybody ready to let that light shine? Let your light shine. The whole world see it. And give glory to God. Let your light shine. You are the light of the world. In the midst of a time of darkness, you're the one that God is calling upon to change this world. We can either sit back and watch it die, or we can stand up and let our light lead those who need a way of escape out of it. The world is going as it's going. The world is going as it's predicted, as it's prophesied. It's turning further and further away from God. But in the midst of this world, the reason you're still here is because there are people who still need to be saved. Amen. People who just need to see what the light truly looks like. Right now, the Lord is calling on us to be that light. How many of you want to be that light today? Come on, stand up on your feet with me right now. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise for a moment. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Let's worship the Lord together. Let's praise him. Light of the world. Hallelujah. Father, we come before you right now, surrendering into your hands, asking you, Lord, have your way. Father, take control of us. Use us, O oh God. Align us for your purpose. Align us for your will. Father, have your way with us. Lord, we want to be your light today. Help us not to be darkened. Help us not to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Your word said it is the power of God unto salvation. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, help us not to be afraid. Not to be ashamed. Help us to realize that there's somebody out there that needs us. They need to hear the voice of someone calling on the Lord. They need to see somebody who in the midst of calamity and trouble will speak to Jesus, will speak a word of faith and say, I know my God has never left me and never forsaken me. Somebody out there that needs to see the direction that's different from the direction they're in now. Hallelujah. Those of you who have children, amen, your children, the friends of your children need to see a saved family. They need to see what a good relationship looks like. 
They need to see holiness because they now see it in their own homes. They need to be exposed to the love of God and the love of Christ. You have a role to play in being the light in your neighborhood. Families around you don't need to see the screaming, the yelling, the hollering. They need to see the love of God coming out of your home. They need to see there's something about that family, that family that moved over there. Amen. There's something about them. Your light needs to bring light into your whole neighborhood. Hallelujah. Let your light shine. Change the school districts that you're in. Let them know that somebody still believes in God. Change how you the districts that you're in. The families, the friends that you work with. Let there be change because the light was in their midst. And understand, some aren't going to like it, but somebody needs it. Somebody needs it. Somebody needs your light to shine. Because otherwise they have no other choice but to follow the ways of this world. You are called today to be used by God to change the world. Come on, lift your hands to God right now. We are on assignment. We are signing up right now. Hallelujah. In the army of the Lord.